welcome back to my channel today. I am in the lovely Folkestone. Folkestone Beach, this is one of my favorite beaches in Kent to shoot at. And today's video is all about lenses. Which lens should you use? How they all differ? What is the actual difference? And in the very, very beginning, when I first started out with photography, I didn't really know what lenses kind of did, the difference, the look, and how much you should spend on the lens. Is it really worth it? And now I've really kind of narrowed down my kit to prime lenses. So today I'm going to purely focus on 35 1.4, 50 1.4 and 85 1.4. Every single shot I'm going to take with each lens so if you are going to invest maybe just one lens or two you can actually see the difference. So I'm here with the lovely Amelia Nathan. Yay! Fun fact, Amelia is actually my hairdresser and they very kindly agreed to model for me today. Yay! Ready? Let's go! So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to walk kind of slowly because I need to take it on two, three different lenses. Okay. okay, so ISO, I'm shooting at 100, aperture 2.2 because it is a very bright day and shutter speed is currently at 8,000. So that is 35. So naturally, I've had to take a step further back with the 85. So again, shooting at ISO 125, f-stop 2.2 and shutter speed 8,000. Right, so now I'm going to change to the 50 and see what the 50 looks like. The so 50 is again in the middle of all of that. Perfect. So very often I'm asked about the kind of setup for a wedding day. So this is typically what I would actually wear for a wedding day. So I'd wear my harness carrying two bodies, two lenses. I'd wear a fanny pack slash bum bag and then a little lens case. So I do always have a third lens on me. I typically carry a 50 or a 24 depending on the situation. And I have this on my hips so I can change it easily because if you do have it in your rucksack, going back and forth, it's a bit inconvenient. So I tend to have it on me on my waist and then you have that to just grab. As you can see, it's a really bright, overexposed day. So that means you have to really think about our settings and actually embrace that light. So let's start shooting with the 85. So naturally with the 85, you've got to step back, but then you can also embrace the crop. So I'm going to bring that aperture down to 1.4. Perfect. Let's change to the 50. Aperture is 2.0, ISO 100. And let's try it with the 35. Lovely. So naturally with the 35, you're gonna get a lot more kind of compositions. You've got the tree, you've got a bit of the beach. So naturally what I would do on an engagement shoot or a couple shoot portrait, I would be really intentional with what kind of lenses I'm shooting. So I would use the 85 for really soft portraits. I'd use the 35, they're gonna get the landscape, get the detail. That's lovely. And have your head in front of Amelia. So I want to see your head like this side, like nestle in each other. So kind of like lean in. That's nice. That's gorgeous. So you know how it's really harsh right now? I'm actually like looking at that and I'm loving the harsh light because I know black and white, that's going to look chef's kiss. So I'm now switching to the 85 and keep those eyes closed for me. Perfect. Let's keep moving. So I'm always asked, by people, if you were to pick one lens out of all the lenses in your kit to shoot one shoot with, I'd probably say 35. I think 35 is a really, really good in between. And I think I'm so used to shooting prime lenses. So with prime lenses, I think they make you a very creative photographer because with zoom lenses, you can just stay and kind of zoom in and out. But I'm very used to kind of jumping in and out with my couples, interacting and kind of getting involved and really thinking about the composition of a shot. And I think that's the beauty of prime lenses. They make you a very active photographer. I really truly believe that. So I've got a little sun flare poking through here. That's 35, 85. Still shooting on the 85. That's lovely. And now the 35 and bringing that aperture down. So that's 85, 35, and now the 50. Must not drop lens. Get insurance. So I'm shooting that at 35, 85, 50. And let's switch back to 35. Ah! Beautiful. 
beautiful stuff, guys. Here again. This is so bright. They didn't teach you this in photography school, do they? That should be like lesson number one. Walk backwards. So we're gonna go down to the rocks. Let's get this right. So the light is there. So do you want it this way? Now you might get wet. You okay with that? Great. I am the biggest cliche. I love the beach. I love the sea. I'm not even ashamed to admit it. Ah! Ah! It's gonna look great. Ah! Ow! Ah! Sorry! Ah! 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 So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna think about behind the scenes and stories. Again, as I always say to people, try and get stories as much as possible on a photo shoot. And remember, you only need to get 15 seconds worth and then put some music over it, tag them, share it to stories. Because what it does is that you're gonna give your followers, potential clients, context, what it's like behind the scenes to work with you, what can they, what can they actually expect on a shoot with you, and it gets people excited. So that when you do actually kind of post those pictures for the first time, people will say to you, oh, I saw the stories that I was really excited to see the outcome. And also it's a really nice thing and memento to give the couple afterwards. So what I will actually do is also WhatsApp these to them so they have that as well. Because how often are they gonna have video clips of them looking beautiful, feeling great, being in a really romantic, magical moment. So it's also something I also send to the couple. So I'm just gonna switch to 50 and then look to me, Amelia, just Amelia. That's lovely. I normally would like be in there being wet, but these rocks hurt. Ah! Ah! So, the shoes are on. I tried, it hurts. That's cute. Lovely. So that's 85. And now let's have a look at the 35. Lovely. Level three. Water. That is stunning. decide which lenses I liked. But in the very, very beginning, I would kind of feel like an enormous pressure to buy like a zoom lens or buy a lens that other wedding photographers had. But I'll be completely honest, don't feel like you need to do that. I think lots of people end up buying kit or lenses or bodies or accessories because everybody else has that. But what I would say kind of a tip and trick is hire a lens for you. You can drop thousands of pounds on a lens that may not, may not work for you. So don't feel like you need to do that because it's very much like all the gear and no idea as in perfect what you know with your camera and love that lens. So I'll be honest, in the very beginning, I had a 35 1.4 and that is all I had for months and months because I couldn't afford to, to kind of buy more lenses. I didn't really know the advantages of them. So for me, I now know the 35 1.4 inside out and I know how to make it work for me. So in the very, very beginning, if I was to say one lens, I'd say the 35, and then I got the 85, and then I got the 50, and then I got the 24. So make sure you hire one, borrow one from a friend. Workshops are a really, really good chance to do that. So even nowadays when I go to workshops with my friends, if another person has a lens that I don't have, I'm like, oh, can I borrow it for a quick shot? If your friends were to let you do that, you can actually see if it does work for you. So don't feel that pressure to buy a zoom lens or buy like big, giant, enormous lens because somebody told you you should get used to your gear and be proud of your gear people always say to me so what you only shoot primes and i'm like yeah and i'm happy and i'm proud of that because that is the kind of look and the kind of signature style that i've now become known for and i'm proud of what i use here you go Bring you in for a kiss. gorgeous much in like one like Fitting, right? Everyone's 
also always turn off your camera when you're changing lenses because you don't want to damage the sensor so always make sure it's off when you are changing lenses got it that is a wrap Woo! <laughs> that's all right anytime you just like that out see i love like that Honestly, that's yeah. so oh, I forgot we took those. So there you have it. That was 35, 50, and 85. Which is your favourite? I'll be completely honest. Changing lenses on a shoot like that is very chaotic and it's just not ideal. So I wouldn't recommend it. But it's purely for purposes so you can see the difference. For me personally, I don't know because I do love the difference of the 85. 35 was a really good all rounder. But then I was quite pleasantly surprised by the 50. I know that's not very helpful, but it's obviously down to just a personal choice, what you like. If you were to pick one lens, I want to know what you'd pick. For me personally, I love the 35, and 35 is a really good all-rounder. Comment below what you want to see more of, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you soon.